Here we are inside of Alma Photo Raw, and we have the portrait pulled up. Now, backstory on this particular image, it was a rainy day, and that's what you're seeing here in these little specks that I kind of stopped based off of shooting this at 1 500th of a second. It was just a little mist, so it wasn't like crazy rain, but this is a portrait of my daughter. We were walking away from the Pennsylvania State Capitol, and I told her, hey, turn around real quick, and she knew what I was going to do. I was trying to catch her off guard, but here we go. It's a snapshot portrait of my daughter, and that's what we're going to edit here inside of On One. So... Uh, with this one, I think the exposure actually looks really good just the way it is. So for me, I think it's time to just style it. And one of the cool things inside of On One Photo Raw is using the AI Style Advisor. Now, this comes in two different flavors. You get the first option of the On One team. And the second op option is the My Style. Now, depending on how many edits you have built up inside of On One, the My Style may or may not be populated for you. Now, you have to have versions 2024 20, and above in order for the My Styles to pop up. But if I hover over these, you can see this is On One kind of looking at the images that I've edited inside of my catalog. And it's given me some options of this is how you typically edit what do you think about this over these images now i'm not sure which which effects are being applied so i would have to look at that but you can kind of gauge how this is working now the one that i think everyone should probably start with at the beginning is the on one team and this works for all genres categories and types of images but the on one team option should be available to everyone because these are options that on one is suggesting for the image now on one doesn't always get it right if i'm just being honest but presets are supposed to be starting points now i don't think i want this photo to be black and white i think i want it to be in color and i want it to be more of a muted matte type of look that is just my personal vision for this image because it is an overcast day. I'm not trying to make things more drastic than they actually are. Although I do like the way that this particular uh, preset is editing the image. So I may come back to that. I'll remember that it's this one and I'll just hover over a few of these. So yeah, I think I am going to go with this one. So go ahead, click it. It's going to apply it to the image. Now it looks like absolutely nothing happened. And that's because the way most effects, all of the good presets, I should say, uh, work are going to impact your effects module. So if I click on effects, you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here. Now I didn't previously edit this image. These are all straight out of the on one preset that I just selected. And if I go before and after, you can see what it's doing. And I like what it's doing here because it's brightening up my subject, which is my daughter, and it's darkening the background just a little bit, and it's doing it quite well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening overall in the image. And I think the reason why the background looks like it's getting darker is because there's a vignette on here. So we'll just turn everything off and build it all up. So first thing is a tone enhancer. It's at 50% opacity. And this is giving that illusion of the brightening effect. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I could work with that. And then we have a color enhancer. And this is not pushed up very high. And that's one of the beautiful things about the opacity slider inside of On One. You don't need the opacity slider to be at 100%. And it's actually a really good practice to kind of pull that back and kind of season to taste for your image. So turn it off, turn it on. It's just bringing in a little bit of that color. And then of course we have the vibrant, or I'm sorry, the vignette, not the vibrancy. All right, so what do I want to do more to this image? Well, one of the cool things about On One is portrait AI, because I think the tone, the colors, everything looks pretty good from the before to the after. But what I need is a portrait. 
and I need to edit some of the skin. And this is not one of those things. I want to put a very serious disclaimer out there. We are not looking to edit things beyond what represents the person. What we want to do is reduce the distractions so that the person who is the subject of the portrait can be seen better and more intent, all right, or intentfully, as opposed to trying to liquefy and, you know, do all like, I don't think that needs to happen. And I also don't need to remove all of the blemishes off of her skin. I, I see a lot of people who overdo that. So I get off my soapbox and we're going to keep working here. Now, when I say removing all of the blemishes, let me just go ahead and pull this all the way up. And I actually have this at 50%. So let me pull this to 100%. This is what it looks like when you're trying to remove all of the blemishes from the skin. It just doesn't look natural. And then of course, even if you try to crank up the detail to kind of bring back some of that contouring, it just doesn't look natural. So instead, what I always recommend is represent the person. And obviously, if there are things that you need to remove because it just makes more sense for the, por the, the person that's being represented in the portrait to shine better, then every decision you make should be to make your subject look the best that they can, but also still looking like themselves, right? We should not, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm only saying this in a very gentle way, right? You are the artist. If you decide that you want to go a little bit deeper, then go for it. But for me, what I want to do is just reduce it. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see that the texture of the skin is still very much present and it doesn't look overpowering, but you don't get lost in the blemishes uh, from my daughter's skin, right? You just look at her and you get to see the photo. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know your thoughts on skin retouching in the comment section below. Then we have the face brightness and I'm just going to go ahead and increase the brightness on her face. Again, everything that I do is to make my subject stand out and I want to be intentional about that. And then, of course, her eyes look darker than everything else, which in a portrait, the eyes should definitely pop. So I'm going to go ahead and brighten those up just a little bit here. And I'll increase the whitening and increase the detail as well. And you don't need a whole lot. Watch when I turn this off and turn it back on. It's really improving the overall photograph here and uh, making her eyes really stand out. And then her eyebrows look a little lost in the in the frame. So I'm just going to increase the brow enhance. And that's just going to give like some local contrast to her eyebrows. So that way they kind of stand out as well. And then, of course, any photo where there are teeth showing, it's always nice to give a little bit of whitening. Don't go like crazy far like that. That just doesn't make sense. But a little bit can go a long way of helping make the teeth look really nice. Now, lip vibrance and lip brightness, that is 100% subjective. I mean, all of what I just did was subjective. Photo editing as a whole is subjective. But what I just did is all dependent upon your subject and how you want to portray your subject. So if I turn off Portrait AI, you can see the impact that it's having on my subject here. One thing that I am noticing is the background is just a little way too bright and I want her to kind of stand off of the background just a little bit more. So we're going to come over here to local and I'm going to add in an adjustment and then we are going to click on masking or hover over masking, go to region, click on region and get this drop down. Let me turn on the mask. There we go. That's why, why are you not giving me the region? Interesting. Okay, no worries. Here's what we're going to do instead. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I am going to come over to super select AI. It's going to analyze the image, just like the quick mask AI brush. There's so many ways of doing the exact same thing. So I'm not doing anything that I haven't done 
in different methods. I'm just going to use the super select AI tool to grab the background and add in a local adjustment to darken the background. So if I hover over the background and we'll see if there's a way that I can select more of it, it doesn't look like it. So I'm just going to make multiple clicks and let's go. You know what? I know what we'll do. It's going to be a lot faster for me to click, drag, select my subject and make sure that I have pretty much everything that I want selected for her selected. I don't want this selected and I'm not sure when I clicked on that. Okay, there we go. Got to be patient when you work with with masking tools because they do have a mind of their own. I mean, it's AI for for what it's worth. All right. So what I want to do is erase her from the effect that I'm going to apply. So I'm going to click on erase and then I'm going to click on where it says adjustments and I'm going to add an adjustment. And as you can see, it has now selected the background as opposed to her. That was the longer way of going around it. Usually you can just select the background by clicking on the masking, but for some reason that wasn't working for me. So I don't want to make it too obvious that I darken the background. So I'm just going to bring back some of the light in the background and that helps her kind of stand out and look a little bit more prominent in the frame, even though she is taking up a majority of the frame. Then of course I can also pull down on the saturation of the background and that's going to help separate her in the frame as well. And I think that that looks pretty good. And maybe we'll pull down on the contrast. So again, further separating her from the background. So here's the before and here is the after. Now, this is not by any means the most wonderful work of art. But when you take a snapshot on the street, just like we did, sometimes you don't need to do a whole lot of extra editing just to make things happen. So that is the final edit. If you found value in the video, smash the like button. If you want to learn more about using Alma Photo Raw, consider signing up for a training call with me down in the description box below. If you want to learn more right here on YouTube, go ahead and click the video that's popping up on screen now. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.